Show off your robot to thousands on the front page of Twitch. Submit your robot reveal video to Fun Premiere Night by going to tinyurl.com forward slash fun 2019 info to learn more. Bad day is right around the corner for the last time ever. So everybody savor this stressful, you know, week that's coming up because it's not going to happen again. So Mother Nature is ramping up in some parts of the world. Um, luckily, myself and Tyler and Karthik and Tom have managed to shovel our way, you know, onto the camera tonight. Um, so it's leaving a lot of people in a panic that, you know, bag day is right around the corner and, you know, they're not sure if they're going to get their robot done in time for stop build. And we have events coming up right away. So let's get into what teams can focus on to keep themselves from going absolutely crazy um, and have a step plan for their unbag time or for their practice day at their first event. So I know a lot of us have are now in districts. So Coach Norm, this is your first year in districts. Um, Karthik, you're well seasoned with districts, along with Tom, Sarah, you've probably heard a lot about it. Um, but when teams are starting to look at where they are right now with the robot, whether it's, you know, they don't have a lot of space to practice in or they feel really behind, what are some good things that people can start looking at now in order to like best set themselves up for their, you know, unbag time or for their entire day of practice at a regional? So Let's see, Tom, you want to give some input on that? I know you've had a lot of experience with them being established for so long. Yeah, we've been in district since I joined the team, so that's all I know. Um, and uh, the the difference is, you're not you don't ha uh, you're not at the uh, uh, at the stadium. You don't have the the practice field. You don't have other teams. Uh, but what you do have is six hours in your shop. So that's your advantage. You know, you, you don't have the real field in the FMS. That's a disadvantage. But but you've got the advantage. So make the most of that advantage. So we plan our bag time, our unbag time uh, to the minute almost. We, we, we you have six hours. So we break it up into two hour chunks. Usually we plan that exactly what tasks are done during each two hour chunk. And you get five minutes and you get 10 minutes. And we plan which tasks can go in parallel, which ones have to go serially if two people need to work in the same area uh, and things like that. And, and the biggest thing I, I would say to most teams, um, we lay out every tool, every part, every piece of material, every person that's needed for that thing is all laid out and ready to go, uh, you know, so that we don't waste a second going to find a, a crimper or, or something. Yeah, that seems like a really critical thing to plan ahead for that. So at this point, like, let's see, Karthik, what do you... What do you think teams should be really like looking at right now in order to to kind of best kind of use their time that they have left with the robot before it goes in the bag? And then kind of how do you how do teams like best gauge, OK, what's our game plan for either our unbag time or, you know, how do we tackle that day zero at a regional? Uh, I mean, I think Tom really touched on it. You know, you need to have a plan. You need to you can't go into this and just kind of willy-nilly it so you need to have to-do lists you want to figure out what you want to accomplish but before you can do that you need to know what your goals are so this goes a lot back to your um, strategic design and your priority list at the beginning because there may come a point where you cannot get everything done and you have to make a decision on what doesn't get done and that decision has got to be based on your early priorities i think that um, especially for teams who are in the district system where you're going to have multiple chances to play and if you're playing early like you're playing in week one or week two lots of teams aren't going to be ready so it's okay to dial things back a little bit and maybe you don't have your elevator ready for your week one event but that's okay and then you can just kind of push forward later on in the season so i think it's really important just in general to have a plan for what you want to do know what your priorities are and make and make um, decisions on what to cut based on your original priorities for your robot yeah, definitely. And Norm and Sarah, um, from the regional standpoint, like what what advice would you have for really young teams or, you know, maybe less experienced teams that that are about to kind of hop into their first event and they're feeling kind of unprepared? Well, I know for us here at 2468 for many years and, and we've now mentored rookies three years in a row and <clears throat> We talk about the critical importance of having two robots, and it's really not two robots. We talk about one and a half robots, and I was a big believer in our first six years of the game mechanism came off the robot, and it was a, a component that we could go in, and in very little time, we could take and put onto the contest robots. We took that game component off so that we could maximize time there at the field. And then we also could dial in that game component at home. Uh, so that was for us was a real critical point. And we've tried to do that with the rookies we've mentored over the last three years. And it, it seemed to be successful for them. 
Yeah, definitely. Sarah, what about you? Yeah, my advice is to reach out to the veterans in your area. We're here to help. We have done this for quite a few seasons and we have a lot of experience that we really want to share with everyone. So be sure to not be scared to reach out and let us help you. Yeah, and I think the only thing that I would add to that is, you know, reach out to the, if you're feeling really panicked, um, reach out to the, the planning committee at the event that you're going to. Um, they can definitely put you in touch with some of those veteran teams if you're going somewhere completely out of your own region before you, you know, compete within your region. So Sarah, besides, you know, working on the robot, what can teams be doing to get ready for their first event um, in this last week that they're able to access their robot? And, um, you know, what types of things could they be looking at to best prepare themselves for like judging material or other things? That yeah, I think a really important thing to do is make sure you have all the video footage and photos that you're going to want of that robot, especially if you're not building a practice robot, because once you start getting that documentation put together, you are going to want photos and videos to put into it. So make sure you're looking now at what you're going to want um, and getting those photos before it's in the bag, because the bag is sort of clear, but you can't really get the photos in good quality. Yeah, definitely. Um, Karthik, so I know 1114 has always had like really solid looking kind of um, pit displays for your robots and stuff. So what like what kind of things has 1114 done in the past to to make sure that they have that kind of documentation or the material that they need in order to create that before your first event? Well, it's really interesting because um, a lot of the times what teams have seen from 1114 in terms of displays at events, they're usually remembering stuff from the later events because early events, a lot of the time it doesn't get done, you know, because there's just so much of a focus on trying to get the robot done and trying to figure things out. And, you know, like there's this whole discussion of, okay, well, I want to make a display of what the robot, you know, and the, the designers are just kind of like, well, we don't even know what the robot's going to do yet. Going, going backwards in the past, um, the, at the early events, the focus would have always been on chairmen's and on the outreach in the pits. And so that's what the displays were focused on. And then because that's stuff that you can work on, you know, starting from January, starting from December, starting from October, like that's totally fine. But for the robot displays and that sort of good stuff, that's usually um, usually set up to get done for the championship and at that sort of level. But I think what's really important for teams is no matter what, you might not have the displays ready, but you need to be prepared to talk to the judges. So it's really good to sit down with whoever's going to be in the pits and just kind of go over the plans of what you want to talk to the judges about and what you want to focus on because there's the judges are only there for a few minutes and you can't just give them all the information so you really need to focus on maybe a couple of words look at those rubrics and figure out what you want to highlight that's going to direct the judges in that right direction we need your help to keep fun loud live and independent help us by visiting our patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now you can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.